share with you on the Liberal Oasis Radio Show. Good morning to you. Uh, on the downside, you've probably lost your life savings. On the upside, uh, perhaps we'll elect a guy that could do something about it. Uh, you know, the saying over at the Nation magazine is uh, bad for the nation, good for the nation. Whenever uh, the country is in a uh, conservative tailspin, nation subscriptions shoot up. Well, uh, the upside here is we all knew that conservative policies would be disastrous for the country. Uh, the question was, would it be self-evident enough that the public would fully recognize it and make a change? And what you have in this election so far, it seems, uh, you have Barack Obama, who has made a who is who has looked at the economic crisis and clearly stated that the root cause of this are the conservative policies of deregulation that have let the marketplace run wild with no accountability or responsibility versus John McCain whose initial answer to every economic problem is earmarks and what we've been left with what the electorate has taken from this is it has become I would submit to you an objective truth an empirical fact in the eyes of most that Barack Obama is better on the economy than John McCain and that John McCain would carry out the next four years of identical policies to George Bush and what is striking about this and I've written about this uh, at my blog at Campaign for America's Future and also at the Huffington Post on liberaloasis.com and different incarnations that we are seeing uh, at least well, anecdotal evidence, and I'd argue some hard evidence, but I'll get to that in a second, that people who are willing to express overt racism are planning to vote for Barack Obama or are at least considering it. Uh, there have been reports in the Politico and in the New Yorker of people using the N-word voting for Obama. Because of the economy. Uh, the biggest uh, hard example of this, and this is where the inanity of the McCain campaign uh, begins. Uh, Michigan, state of Michigan. This is a state that Al Gore won and John Kerry won. It is an economically distressed state. Probably, well, the, probably may be the hardest hit state economically in the country. Uh, and the only reason why there are people that thought that John McCain could turn that blue state red in this political environment is race. Because the mayor of Detroit, the former mayor of Detroit, Kwame Kilpatrick, got wrapped up in a scandal, forced out of office, and you know he's black. And Barack Obama's black, so you gotta think those racist white people in Michigan would say, I don't want another scandal ridden black guy running the country. I mean, that's how their guilt by association minds work but that logic was so flawed and so ridiculous that the McCain campaign had to pull the plug on one of the key states in their electoral strategy one month before the election so that should have told them right there that the old race card games that have been the lifeblood of Republican politics for a generation, were not happening this time round. And you would think they would have, I mean, they had the wherewithal to make that judgment and deploy their resources elsewhere. But it did not, they didn't take the next logical step and say, huh, we better have something to say about the economy if we're going to hold on to the red states and have a prayer of picking off a blue state here and there. And I, I shouldn't say that the McCain campaign is completely ignorant of this. So here you have, at the start of this week, uh, clearly the economic crisis was uh, devastating to McCain. Uh, the suspension of the campaign stunt didn't work. The polls shifted in Obama's direction, and the McCain campaign went to a panic, uh, pulling out of Michigan, etc. Uh, they even said explicitly that they could not win in Michigan because of the economy. They admitted it. 
publicly to the point that Obama gets to go on the campaign trail and talk about how these guys that can't know that they talk about the economy they will lose. It's amateur hour over there. So what do they do? On the weekend, they start talking about all other guilt by association stuff. I'm not even going to bore you with it because I know that you know how ridiculous it is. Um, but it's not even new uh, cheap shot attacks. It's, it's recycled trash from the spring that most people already know about. You know, either you believe Barack Obama is a radical Muslim terrorist sympathizer or you don't at this point. And those that do are in the minority and are already backing John McCain or a third party candidate. So, uh, but they say, this is our best shot. Let's bring out the trash again. Let's see if the old race card tricks still work. But they don't feel so strongly about it that they would talk about it in the debate. I mean, this is the silver bullet, people. And if you go to conservative blogs, they were apoplectic. Why aren't you talking about Bill Ayers? We were talking about 48 hours. You've been talking about 48 hours. Why'd you stop? Either this is what conservative bloggers were saying. You know, either you're a terrorist sympathizer or you're not. You just treated him, John McCain. You just treated him like he's a qualified presidential candidate who would fight terrorists. <laughs> it so happens that he is a qualified presidential candidate who would fight terrorists. Perhaps that's the problem. They're trying to win a race against a fictional character that does not exist. And you can try to manufacture the caricature. They've been good at about it in the past, but usually, you know, they would take something like, uh, you know, John Kerry windsurfing, and then spin that out to make a broad case that he's an elitist. Uh, Al Gore makes a, you know, a little flub. They'd spin it out and say he's a serial exaggerator. Uh, they'd have they'd have some grain to work with. In this case, you have to know that when seventy million people see Barack Obama in a debate. He is going to come across like a thoughtful, knowledgeable, mainstream guy, because that is all he has been throughout this entire process. And this phony character you came up with is going to fall flat. Uh, so the McCain campaign, I think, has some, you know, they're conflicted. So McCain does not get into the smear stuff during the debate, recognizes that the economy has to be talked about. So he comes up with a new mortgage plan. Um, so to try to generate some headlines out of it, it didn't work very much. He, he still hasn't grasped that he can't just whip up uh, economic plans on the back of a napkin and I think that's going to solve his problems. He has to articulate an entire economic vision of the country that shows it would be distinctly different than George W. Bush, and he still hasn't done that. But at least there's some acknowledgement that he needs to talk about the economy more. Uh, but they can't just make a decision about that. So they do that for a day in the debate. They still lose the debate. And now they go back to the guilt by association stuff again. And it's like they're feeding off of the hate from the rallies, from the McCain-Palin rallies. Uh, and they are deluding themselves if they think that is a majority of the country because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, believe this is not a country that is free of racism. But we should take heart I mean, the fact that there are people who are openly rethinking uh, their past uh, racial biases and recognizing that it doesn't matter what color a person's skin is or their background, if they can help the country and help the economy, it is worth voting for that person. It is heartening evidence that people change. People change for the better. Do not give up on people, even if they say something that's offensive. They can still be talked to. They can still be reasoned with. Uh, past history uh, of uh, American politics aside, the McCain campaign is making their bet on the old politics and listening to all the hate. You're seeing these videos, people going to these McCain-Palin rallies and taking videos of folks. They're calling Obama a terrorist. They're saying, look at his name. Look at his bloodlines. Saying it openly. Yeah, I, I don't believe there's secret racism in this election. I don't think there is secret racism not being picked up by the polling. There is loud and proud racism. But it is in a, a hateful corner 
of the country. And quite frankly, I love to see it. Your hate people is my food. Please give me more. I don't need, I don't care if the price of orange juice is going up. I can drink on your hate. I look forward to the day when Barack Obama is president so I could watch your heads explode. It would provide me with such joy. Such, such joy.